don't know about you, but I'm getting hungry. <laughs> One of the uh, fun things about this is that it helps with my diet. It's hard to believe that someone like me, who's been roughly 150 and five foot nine for 20 years, <laughs> blossomed this last year in the winter to a good 180. And I only gained two inches of my waist, so must have been good for me, but I don't like it. So sharing devotionals and being in the ministry gives me an opportunity to not go to some exercise machine and dance on technology, but to discipline myself in the Word, in my relationship, to, you could say, the temple of the Holy Spirit, so to speak, that my body is, but in reality, it's just dead stone, no pun on my name intended. Okay, maybe a little pun. But the living stone that's inside, I think he's a lean, mean fighting machine. <laughs> oh, maybe God is, I'm not. But I know that in seeking to share these and to have you keep me disciplined, I'm growing, I'm learning, I'm spending a lot more time with Jesus than I might have without you. So I wanted to thank you this morning. I wanted to say thank you for making me read my devotionals. the best way I know how to keep disciplined. When you're suddenly shaken, have you ever been doing just great and then someone says something or you see something <laughs> or you remember something from the past and suddenly, wham, your peace is gone. <clears throat> suddenly you feel like a failure. You wonder why you've done what you have done or why you haven't done more or why you haven't done things differently. As you begin to think about it all, a cloud of depression blocks out the warmth and contentment you felt just moments ago. <laughs> that happened to me one day when our youngest son, David, came home from college for the weekend. On Sunday afternoon, when he was ready to leave to return to school, he came to say goodbye to me. I had been taking a nap and David came in and kissed me goodbye. When he left, I prayed for him and his safe journey, then rolled over to catch another 40 wings. But as I did, impulsively, my thoughts raced to the attic of my mind to pull out dusty boxes of stored memories. I began re rehearsing days gone by, searching them out to see if I had been the mother I should have been, if I had adequately prepared my son for what lay ahead of him in life. As I rummaged through the past, and suddenly, if onlys and what ifs began to attack me. Hmm. And just like that, the peace and contentment that had been mine when I lay down for a nap were gone. What had happened? Nothing had changed except my thoughts. Yet that was enough to change the entire atmosphere of my afternoon. My joy had turned to mourning, my peace to turmoil. My rejoicing over recent spiritual victories was now overshadowed by doubts, inadequacies, and fears. Not because of anything my son had done, David is a fine young man, stable, confident, committed. But because of my own mental turmoil, because of a thought process that I had. And beloved, you know, I'm not that unique. You too have been there. And if you're like me, it probably has not been a long time occurrence, but something that can come upon you when you least expect it. Why? Where do these thoughts come from? And what do we do when this happens? The problem is that so often we forget that we are in warfare and that Satan's target is our mind. Because as a man thinketh in his heart, so is he. It is only logical that Satan would attack our mind, from Proverbs 23, 7. He disguises himself, of course. He doesn't want us to think he has anything at all to do with our evil thought process, yet he does. And that is why God tells us 
to take up the shield of faith with which you will be able to extinguish all the flaming arrows of the evil one and take the helmet of salvation and the sword of the spirit which is the word of God. Ephesians 6, 16 and 17. This was precisely what I had to do that afternoon after David left. I had to purposely choose to bring every thought captive to the obedience of Jesus Christ. Even as it says in 2 Corinthians 10, 3, 1 through 6, or 3, 10, 3 through 6. And to Philippians 4, 8. And to Philippians 4, 8, it at the door of my mind. <laughs> Then I had to walk by faith, taking truths such as Romans 8, 28 through 30, and living by them rather than by my feelings, thoughts, and evaluations of life. How am I able to do this? How am I prepared to do this? What have I done to make me victorious in these times of mental warfare? The answer is, I know our God, and I know his ways. To have this knowledge, two things must be an integral part of my life. I cannot survive without them. A regular, diligent study of the Word of God and a consistent quiet time alone with Him. Without these two basic principles of spiritual equipment, we cannot withstand Satan's assaults on our mind. Time alone with God and faithful study of His Word equip and establish us so we can stand firm when Satan attacks our thoughts. Brethren, Whatsoever is true, whatsoever is honorable, whatsoever is right, whatsoever is pure, whatsoever is lovely, whatsoever is of good repute, if there is any excellence, if anything worthy of praise, dwell on these things. The things you have learned and received and heard and seen in me, practice these things, and God of peace will be with you. Philippians 4, 8 and 9. Again, wow. <laughs> Such a complete package. It makes you think, what more can you say? But aren't we a victim of our own thought process most of the time? Don't we create our own issues and problems and situations? Sometimes I don't think that Satan's so concerned about each and every one of us, unless you're in ministry, as he is about just letting us do our own thing. How often do we flock to the TV and watch some questionable program, and then we suddenly have... You know, provocable thoughts where we see other people and we think sexual thoughts, sensual thoughts, or do we think holy thoughts? In other words, we program our mind. What we put into it is our choice. Jesus said that our eye, such as it is, if it was full of light, would be putting inside of us a great light within. But our eye, that if we put into a darkness, how great the darkness would be within. And what he meant by that was that not just light and dark, because God created those, but the things that create darkness in you. You know what it's like. You know what they are. You know, if you're on the internet and you're looking at pornography, that's darkness. If you're on the internet and you're studying the scriptures, that's lightness. <laughs> if suddenly somebody does a pop-up window in your monitor and it's a questionable pop-up and you don't know whether to click it, don't. That's choice. And so you see, you can choose which way your mind will go. And as a man thinketh in his heart, so he is. So what you can do is you can actually turn the direction of your heart back to God. And that's what Kay is saying. The scriptures, as you study them, give you the opportunity to do that. You can quote them, you can, by faith, believe them, you can do all these other things. Or you can just choose to do it. And I like to think of it as just do it. It may be a song, it may be a word, it may be a scripture, it may be a token of faith. How some people get into all these prayer napkins I never understood. But anyways, it can be just something as simple as looking at a hummingbird that flies by every day and sniffs my flowers, you know, and checks them out and says, Hey, that tastes good. Sounds like the Lord and tastes like the Lord. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Do you know that hummingbird tells me that every day? Maybe not in word, but he sure does in thought and deed. And as I turn those thoughts to be mindful of a scripture that fits every circumstance of my life, guess what? All the circumstances seem to take on a different meaning, a different perspective. They seem to be light. What you do is your choice. What God chooses you to do is his. Now, if you respond to him, whether it be light 
whether it be dark, whether it be rain, whether it be good, whether it be evil, you can turn it around and give it to the Lord and he'll show you it was his will in the first place anyways. That will be done, O oh Lord, this day as you reveal to us how you're speaking to our heart.